Hello, in this video I want to talk about an interesting little number property that I learned about recently. So suppose you're sitting down on a Sunday afternoon, not really sure what to do with your time, so you start writing out numbers. You get to 220 and you're like, let's add up the factors, let's just see what happens. So you list out the factors of 220, you go 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, 11, 20, 22, and clearly I've gone through the work of listing these factors before, so I know them all. So you list them out and you're like, hmm, that's pretty cool. I wonder what happens if I add them. So you go 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 5, and you add all these because you still have 6 more hours before it gets dark and you just don't know what to do with your time, so you add up the divisors. And after adding them all up, you get it equals 284. Well, that's kind of boring. But then you think, what if I go with 284 and I list out its factors and then I add them up? I don't know. I just want to see where this rabbit trail takes me. Let's see what happens. So 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 71 plus 142 you add them up and you get 220. Hey, now that's pretty neat, you think to yourself. Because what do you know? The sum of the factors of 284 equals 220. So then I go up and I find the sum of the factors of 220, and they equal 284. It's this interesting little loop. And you think to yourself that 220 and 284 must be pretty friendly. Two buds that just kind of like to hang out together. They're close. They're friendly. Might even call them amicable. And in fact, that's what they are. They're amicable numbers. They are two numbers whose sum of divisors equals each other. So another example that you can look at for two amicable numbers is 1184 and 1210. So the factors of 1184 are 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. And so we list out all of these factors. Now you will notice that when I list the factors, I don't include the factor 1184 itself. I do include one, but I don't include its pair 1184. That's because clearly if I add up all those, uh, it's going to be too big. It's called the proper divisors. The proper divisors of a number are all the divisors except for the number itself. I listed out the factors for 1184, and if you would add those all up, they would equal 1210. So then I go to 1210, and I list out its factors, and I add them together. And what do you know? They equal 1,184, and I'm back in my cycle. So 1,184 and 1,210 are another pair of amicable numbers. And it's kind of interesting looking at history. Amical numbers pop up in the works of many major mathematicians. Pythagoras was known to have uh, known about number 220 and 284. He talked about them. He made a few quotes talking about these friendly numbers. Fermat came along, and he added the pair 17,296 and 18,416. A couple years after him, Descartes came along, and he's like, ah, he can't have all the fun. I want to find my own pair. So he, and I don't know how he did this without a calculator, he must have taken a long, long time. Found 9,363,584 and 9,437,056. And I actually do know how he found those without a calculator. Uh, a different mathematician came up with a certain formula that allows you to find amicable numbers. Um, but it still wasn't super easy. It still required a little searching, even with the formula. So Descartes was able to use the formula to get some pairs of numbers... Then he just had to check those pairs of numbers uh, to see if they were in fact amicable. So he wasn't entirely searching in the blue 
uh, for those numbers because if you think about two pairs up in the 9 million, you're going through a lot of numbers if you're just searching in the blue sea for that. Euler added 64 pairs a little bit later, but then two of his pairs turned out to not actually be amicable. The great Euler made a mistake there, and it was proven that two pairs were not in fact amicable. But anyways, I think it's interesting how these major mathematicians, Pythagoras, Fermat, Descartes, Euler, throughout history, they popped up in this history of amicable numbers. Okay, well, that's cool to have, you know, a little buddy, your, your best friends with a number. But sometimes you don't want to just hang out one-on-one -on -one with someone. You want to have a friend group. You want to go out, hang out with some friends. In fact, that's what 12,496 feels like. He doesn't want just one buddy. He wants a whole group. He wants to walk around with his crew. So you take the factors of 12,496, you add them up, and you get the number 14,288. Take the factors of 14,288, add them up, and you get 15,472. So you're not returning back to 12,000. We continue on. Let's see what happens. Take the factors of 15,000, you add them up, you get 14,536. You take these factors, add them up, 14,264. How long are we going to go? Well, when I take the factors of this, add them up, I get 12,496. And the cycle repeats. So in this cycle, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 different numbers. So 12,496, he's got a big group. He can go hang out not just one-on-one, -on -one, but he can get his whole group of friends, and they just have a good time on the weekends. In fact, mathematicians have called these numbers sociable numbers. They don't just hang out one-on-one, -on -one, but they like to chat with big groups, be the life of the party. Sociable numbers are numbers where the sum of the divisors have a cycle um, bigger than 2. Okay, so they have a cycle of three or more. In fact, sociable numbers are part of a bigger thing called the eloquat sequences. Eloquat sequence is defined as a sequence where each term is the sum of proper divisors of the previous term. So we can look at a number such as 12. Now the factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. If you add all those up, you get 16. So then you take a look at 16, and the factors of 16 are 1, 2, 4, 8. Add them up, you get 15. Okay, so then we take a look at 15, and its divisors are 1, 3, and 5. Add them up, what do you get? 9. Take a look at 9, where does this lead us? Well, the only factors there are 1 and 3. 3 repeats, but we only have to write it once. Add those up, you get 4. The factors of 4 are 1 and 2, which gives us 3. The factors of 3 are just 1. Okay, 1 and 3, but again, 3 not included in the proper divisors. So then we look at 1, and that has 0 factors, so then we look at 0, but that is 0, and we kind of stop at 0. So looking at this eloquat sequence, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 different numbers. And it does not continue in a cycle. I end at 0. It does not repeat. So it is not a sociable number like our 12,496 over here. Sociable numbers are a special type of eloquat sequence. So it gets interesting when you're looking at eloquat sequences and just kind of thinking about uh, do they repeat or not? How long is the eloquat sequence? Sometimes you got big numbers like 1, 2, 6, 4, 4, 6, 0. And you take a look at this big guy. Does he like friends? Does he hang out with anyone? Well, he hangs out with 1,547,860, who in turn, when you take her divisors and add them up, you get 1727636. Take her divisors and you get 
1305184. And then you take his divisors and you're back where you started. So in this eloquat sequence, you go one, two, three, four different numbers, and then it repeats. So it is in fact a sociable number, a little bit smaller group of friends there with only four of them, but then it repeats that cyclable, so we call it sociable. So kind of interesting here, you've got the real lover of friends, 14,316. You take his divisors, you find some number, you take his divisors, you find some number, and it eventually repeats after 28 different numbers. So he's got the big group of friends. He's the life of the party, you could say. Okay, but you all know those people who just kind of hang out by themselves because they think they're too good for you. Okay, they don't want to hang out with you because they think they're more special. They think they're better than you. Uh, people kind of like six. When you look at six and you take a look at their divisors, you get one, two, three. Add them up and what do you get? Six. That's right. Six is only friends with himself. He's too good for you. He's too good for all those other people. He's not amicable. He's not sociable. His eloquent sequence number is one. It's him and only him. And that is because he believes himself to be perfect. He is a perfect number. He doesn't hang out with anyone because he's perfect. All he needs is himself. Perfect numbers are numbers whose divisors add up to themselves. So as I said, he is an eloquent sequence with a length of 1. The cycle length is 1. Another example, 28. That goes 1, 2, 4, 7, 14. Add them up, you get 28. He's hanging out with just himself. But don't forget 496. She's a little stuck up to her divisors add up to 496. It's a perfect number. Now, they're actually pretty cool, these perfect numbers. Um, I'm making them sound a little stuck up, a little too good for nothing. But perfect numbers are a cool idea where their divisors add up to themselves. So far, I've shown you three examples of even perfect numbers. You also have 8,128, another perfect number. And in fact, Mathematicians have only found even perfect numbers. They have not found an odd perfect number. And it is sort of assumed that odd perfect numbers do not exist. However, a proof has not been shown for that. So they either do not exist or are very, very rare because um, they have had computers check many, many numbers, millions, billions of numbers for these perfect numbers, and we still have not found an odd one. Okay, so even though you got six sitting there in a corner, aloof from everyone else, people still like to admire them. Sometimes people look at those people and say, man, I wish I could be a six. That's what 95 does. The factors of 95 are 1, 5, 19. If you add those up, you get 25. So I look at the factors of 25, and I would get just 1 and 5. I take the factors of that, add them up, and I get 6. Well, what do we know about 6? That's our perfect guy in the corner. His factors are 1, 2, and 3, and the cycle repeats. Okay, and it's 6, 6, 6. So when I look at this pattern, this eloquent sequence, it goes 95, 25, 6, 6, 6, on forever because 6 just repeats itself. So this one does not terminate in 0, and neither does it repeat. 95 wants so bad to be that guy in the corner, aloof from everyone, the perfect guy. And we call him, number 95, an aspiring number. He is aspiring to be greatness. He is aspiring to be perfect, but he can only sort of get there at the end of his eloquent sequence. But then he's stuck in this infinite loop of only wanting to be perfect and he can't define himself. He can only be defined by the perfect number. Maybe that's taking a little extreme, but we call these aspiring numbers if their sequence, their eloquent sequence terminates in a perfect number. Okay, I want to leave you with one last interesting idea about amicable numbers. There's something called in Gaussian integers, which you actually know about. They're just a fancy name for imaginary numbers. The th 
the numbers of the form a plus bi. Amicable numbers can actually be found in the Gaussian integers. Example, the number 8008 plus 3960i. If you find the factors of that, and yes, you can find factors of imaginary numbers, they do have unique factorization. So there is a set way you can factor that number. So you can factor it, and when you find all of its factors and add them up, you get 4,232 minus 8,280i. You take the factors of that, add them up, and you return to where you started. They're an amicable number in the imaginary numbers. And I just thought that was one last interesting thing. There are amicable numbers in the Gaussian integers. Well, I thought that little lesson in the friend groups of numbers was as interesting to you as it was to me. And maybe you learn that you can be amicable and a little bit sociable. You don't have to be perfect. You know, be friendly. Hang out with people.